uh, folks, I know we're going, we're talking. <laughs> I may just jump in here and just go ahead and say, yeah, welcome to Dr. Movie. I'm with my good friend, RJ McCready. Uh, we've got a lot of catching up to do. So this is kind of a, it's another special episode and we're just, we're just rolling here and talking about uh, the good old days and just kind of catching up because we haven't interacted in a while, but uh, we did have uh, some fun back early on. We, we were doing the dude looks like the eighties together. Yeah. And then, then I wigged out and took off and then you ran with it by yourself. Well, and then you're like, wait a minute, I got another idea, which came up with, with bite size cinema, which to me kind of changed the game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if, if you can take credit for what I'm doing now, if you want, because basically I'm, I'm doing bite size. I'm just doing it in my car. <laughs> I'll hand it over to you, Rick. You're doing a great job of it. You know? so, yeah. <laughs> and I even, I even say, I think, uh, you you requested a, a vanishing point, which will come out right before this episode. Great and, movie. Uh, and I talk about, hey, if you, if you like what I'm doing here, stop listening to this show and go check out Bite Size Cinema because that's really kind of where this started, right? So, but yeah, everybody, R.J. McCready's in the house, and this is gonna be a whole lot of fun, man. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's like I, I listened to your episode with uh, Dave Z, and oh, it's yeah. great. But great, you guys got together from Exploding yeah. Head podcast long time and, coming uh, i like what he said because he said what film do i talk to ricky morgan about and <laughs> i kind of feel like that with today you know <laughs> it's like here we are we're finally getting to talk about battle beyond the stars yeah well, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, well I mean it's pretty obvious i mean <laughs> i mean you know that there's not a lot i'm gonna go nah i'm gonna tell you i'll give you a little secret and this everybody will hear this too i guess but I've invited my sister to come on and do a show with me. And she yeah. is literally a female version of me. We are totally alike. <laughs> and uh, I said, pick out a movie. Let's do it. And she's like, well, I, I, I don't know what you would like. And we are actually going to do Teen Witch. Because <laughs> that's one of her favorites. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. It'll be fun. So, wow. you know, that's that's the beauty of I just I like movies. And you know, the wider the, the, the range, the better, I think. So I, I, that thing of, Oh, what do we talk about with him? Because I'm, I'm open to whatever, man. And, uh, it's pretty obvious. You and I are cut out of the same cloth. We're just from a different continent. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, it's like, I, I live in England, you live in Texas, but <laughs> Texas, it, it just, it, it may be Tennessee where, um, is that still part of Texas? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they were segregated a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it, it, it's like when I I hit play and you had the background for Battle Beyond the Stars, and so did I, yeah, and we're yeah. both connected in that way, you know. <laughs> yeah, folks, if you're not watching the you're not watching the, 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 the video video version of this, yeah, I clicked on. I got Battle Battle Beyond the Stars behind me, and then as soon as he clicked on, I was like, look at that. There you go. That same you know. frame of mind again. Well, I, expect, some I expect nothing any different. I mean, that's just us, man. Absolutely. Uh, let me tell you, one of my, one of my prized stories. possessions I have came from mm. RJ. He, he sent, he was back in the Hail Ming days, but he sent us a poster from Canon Films oh. <laughs> that you had autographed <laughs> by a yeah. lot of people on the poster. That was it. I don't know if they're legit or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's kind of films for you, isn't it? Really. <laughs> but I mean, what a what a awesome idea! Because again, you and I, the canon stuff. I mean, what can you say, right? <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah, exactly. That's it. It's, uh, so it's how, build, how building block? How does build it, uh, Battle Beyond the Stars any different, right? Because it's almost you're almost in the same category with the the Roger Corman stuff versus the canon stuff. You you know what you're gonna see. It's probably not top notch, but you're gonna be entertained. And exactly, it's 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 a film that I can't forget about. Right. You know, it's it, as as much as I watch it, and a lot of people say, I've heard a lot of people say, it's the this is the best bad movie in in sci-fi. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. But you watch it, but are you entertained by this film? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say, is there films today? The like Battle Beyond the Stars, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you know, you've got the director James Gunn, right, right, 
and you you look at Guardians of the Galaxy and you look at this film and yeah, the two go together. I would say you can you can see the influence for sure, right? Absolutely. And that's the beauty of tying all these movies together, going back to just liking everything because everything influences everything. It's it's a never ending chain. And how can you not say Guardians of the Galaxy is not inspired or James Gunn not being expired, expired, inspired? Don't want to be him expired. <laughs> inspired <laughs> by <laughs> the, obviously he grew up with these same movies, right? Because yeah. like you said, there's characters in this as goofy looking as some of them are. You still kind of love them. I mean, it, it's it's a part of your your buildup because you've seen it so many times as a kid. And like you said, there's 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 images and stuff you don't forget. No. And that's that's the name of the game, folks. How are you remembered, right? Good or bad, there's things that stand out. There's nothing worse than making a film or a song or anything that is totally forgettable. So oh. sometimes you do the outlandish to make it stick. Well, you know, the other thing that makes me laugh at this film is that when I watched it when I was younger, uh, George Peppard looked really old. And now, <laughs> now he's on a look a little bit younger. <laughs> Just a little, right? <laughs> yeah, as I'm getting older. <laughs> but, you know, it, and this is it. You don't only have George Peppard. It's all the characters in this film as well, yes. which yes. you yeah. could almost see them do their own spin-off. I could see Space Cowboy, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they, that would probably happen, you know, with if this film came out, you know, today. Yeah. Uh, so we haven't thing, even properly introduced the movie. It is 1980s <laughs> Battle Beyond the yeah. Stars. <laughs> Sorry, people. <baby. laughs> <laughs> well, again, I knew this would be. It's a yeah. sci-fi adventure flick, which says RJ and Rick all over it. Sci-fi Absolutely. adventure. There you go. There you That's go. all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Uh, quick synopsis. The story, is it original? Absolutely not, because it's basically Seven Samurai or Magnificent Seven just told in space. That's the way Corman rolled back in these days. But yeah, this says seven space warriors do battle to save a peaceful planet from a ruthless conqueror who promises <laughs> to give his laser-toting mutant followers eternal life by granting victims organs and limbs <laughs> on their aged bodies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little more detail than I expected, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, adapted from Seven Samurai. So there you go. It even says it right there. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a film that ripped off a film bef after a film ripped off a film, isn't it? It's, uh, it's in several different layers. Yeah. Um, and it it gets straight to the point as well at the beginning of the movie, doesn't it? With uh, Sador turning up to... Yeah. Is it Kira? And it Kira? basically outlines a plot, plot in a couple of minutes, doesn't it? I'm here. I'm going to take over the planet and I'll give you a week to. That was know. something revisiting. I was like, wow, 11 minutes into it. And we've yep. already gone through the setup of destruction of the planet to the young boy out on a mission. He's already flying a ship 11 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I was like, well, we're moving. <laughs> this guy doesn't mess around. And you've got John Saxon as well, and he's great in this. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about the cast, right? First and foremost, we got Richard Thomas, right, mm -hmm. playing Shad. Jim I actually had a, I had a friend named Shad, and I didn't even know. <laughs> I mean, it was the first time I ever even heard that name. And then we go back and visit this. I'm like, wow, maybe she <laughs> named him after this movie? I don't know, because I've never heard of a, of a Shad otherwise. I don't know anybody called Shad. <laughs> But I, did, I had a buddy named Shad, and I was like, wow. But yeah, Richard Thomas, John Boy in Space, right? I don't know what else you need to know. I don't know if, I don't know if you're familiar with the Waltons or not, but it was I a big show here. Well. That's right, Night Jim Bob. Yeah, so Jim Bob. <laughs> <laughs> George Papard, which you talked about a while ago. The A team. The A team. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's a, you know, as a, as a, seven-year-old RJ back in the day. That was what it was for me. It was, you know, Hannibal Smith in space. Hannibal. Yeah. I love it when a spaceship comes together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he plays cowboy in this, right? So That's he's, right. You, you see him behind RJ right here in this picture. I mean, he's got his yeah. gun in his hand, cigarette in his mouth. He's, uh, he's an earthling, which is odd in this movie. And it really... It's a weird thing that's in this, and I know they're playing to the time that the movie was made, but he's making all these references to things that nobody has any relationship to whatsoever because he talks about Westerns. <laughs> old Westerns and all this stuff. And it's like, 
what time period is this? Because the fact that you would even have copies of this movie <laughs> <laughs> in this time frame. Anyways, to back that up, you got Robert Vaughn. Now, who doesn't love some Robert Vaughn? I mean, Superman yeah. 3. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's right. One of the original Magnificent Seven, obviously. Magnificent Seven, and basically playing the same yeah. role. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I like so, his character. He's, he's made so much money in being an outlaw that he doesn't, <laughs> he can't spend it anywhere because no one will allow him to. You know, it's just great. <laughs> you know, I just watched a documentary on uh, a thing we had over here called the Us Festival back in the '80s. Big yeah. concert venue. Uh, the guy that was partners with. Uh, uh, Steve Jobs that created Apple. I can't remember his name at the moment. Dad Byrne, that's stupid. I should know his name. But same scenario. He's like, I've got so much money now. I really don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to spend multiple millions and just throw a big concert. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Same concept. Same, same concept, except, you know, uh, he, he didn't want to die at the end. He's in Sador in space. <laughs> right. <laughs> and speaking of Sador. John Saxton. And Excellent. everybody knows that's been listening to this show. Got a lot of love for John Saxton. Even even on the Hell Ming. I mean, we're big John Saxton fans. Hands down. You know well, who I like um, you know who I like a little bit more than, than John Saxton though? Sybil Danning. Danning yeah, he was gonna <laughs> say that, yeah. I think the uh, costume department had a field day on this one, didn't they? Huh? Wow. <laughs> Wow. And every every time she's on the screen, you you just like you forget every word that's being said. You're just looking, going, how how is that staying on? <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow, that's some that's some yeah. super glue right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, uh, that's that's for the most part. Unless you can well, think of somebody else you want to point just out. Just mention someone else. You know, how do you know that you're watching a '80s sci-fi movie because you got Sam Jaffe in a box? You know? <laughs> <laughs> how can we make this movie more '80s sci-fi? <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Budget was running true. a little bit slim. Uh, and the and, uh, the, and the, the guy that plays the, the main, plays the uh, main uh, Nestor, you know, Nestor number one. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Earl yeah. Bowen. He's been in a bunch of stuff too. So uh, a lot of them, a lot of the other people are kind of regular uh, people that are in the uh, Corman flicks and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, this is we, we had made a comment. We were talking back and forth. We brought up Battlestar Galactica. Yep. Absolutely. And. Uh, this was just the craze at the time, right? Star Wars just kind of made everybody start saying, we got to find our own Star Wars. There's no doubt they took Seven Samurai and tried to make Star Wars with it because the fact that uh, Richard Thomas, they even tell him, well, you're just a boy. You don't even know how to do anything, right? I mean, it's the same Luke Skywalker setup that you get. Oh, uh, yeah, no doubt. Absolutely no doubt about that. And, and we got to mention Nail. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. I mean, it, it's very, um, what can I say? Kind of inclusive, shall we say? <laughs> you know, <laughs> as in, um, you've got a badass, you know, as in, as in Neil, and she's basically telling Shad to so basically man, you know, so it's a story of a farm boy going on an adventure and becoming a man, and she's helping him with that. Yeah. And I absolutely love this spaceship. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen it in any other movie. Even I mean, I, I don't even know how to really describe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because and, and what's funny is no other ship even has even the same kind of design throughout oh. the the rest of the movie. All the ships look like stuff from Star Wars. This thing, I, I guess they were trying to give it a well, obviously oh, yeah, a it's more mechanical look about it or something, wasn't it? You know, it just well, it's definitely humanistic, right? Because it's got bristles yeah, on that's it. What I'm looking for. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And even the the back of it when it's flying over, it looks like a human back. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you think about it, it's and, it's almost like um, H.R. Giger, isn't it? You know, from Alien. Yeah. It's a type yeah. of sort of concept. It's got a touch of that, uh, but I think they're just trying to make the ship as humanistic as possible, even with her being called Nell and her having the yeah. voice. And like I said, they're her uh, her landing gear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what a weird idea. Now I've never I have never done the research on why, but 
you know, it does stick out like a sore thumb. But the beauty of this film, you know, because you've got one set of bad guys, but you've got all the other renegades that he goes and hunts down, the guns for hire to come and help. And every ship is totally different design, so you don't get confused on who's who. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Because it, it's, it, you know, when in most shows, it's it, it gets kind of difficult to tell because there's so much going on. But here, there's there's no confusing, and they they lay the film out to where you don't get that confused either. So, and the other thing is with these other characters is that they're not good people either. Right. If, I mean, so you've kind of got a wolf to hunt the wolf down. It just depends which one's more evil than the other. Right. And I think I, I get that impression with was it Cayman the Cayman guy yeah the I, lizard dude yeah most of the time he gets up to no good <laughs> yeah yeah well he's, he's playing got, he's playing uh, the ito girl right i mean <laughs> <laughs> um but the, the the thing is you kind of i'm kind of interested on what's going on with these characters elsewhere in the galaxy you know what they were up right. to and you know with backstories so um that's where i this <sighs> This film, I can't forget about it. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got all these other characters, and they're yeah. great. <laughs> and, and you want you want more backstory of you know what even led to where they are, right? Who who doesn't yeah. want, you know, who doesn't want the guilt story, right? I mean, <laughs> imagine <laughs> yes. how many movies that could be. I mean, because this guy has confiscated all this stuff and has riches beyond his own needs. What all do you have to do to get that, right? Because you hear him, eh, yeah, I'm a hired gun. I I kill for. For for money, you know. <laughs> and he's been sitting in that chair all this time until he turns <laughs> up. <laughs> and even in his ship, it's like, I mean, you can tell, man. I mean, it's it's uh it's low budget. There's no doubt. Oh, he's yeah. basically laying in a cardboard box, and he got some blinking lights on it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but that's again, that's the beauty of this movie, man. Uh, and I have to say, for the most part, from from an '80s aspect, and going back and looking at this. The, the, the special effects hold up pretty decently, man. Well, I think they do, Rick, and I think I've heard you mention this before uh, with your movie reviews. Um, does this film show you something different? All right, it's 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 taken from Star Wars, but it's still showing you something different. Absolutely. Uh, and one of the scenes which I think is fantastic is actually Sador's ship, Hammerhead, coming down onto a keel at the beginning. Yeah. I haven't seen that anywhere else. Yeah, you know, and the, the fact the, that the people are standing here and they're looking and it's coming right overhead and it's right there, right? It's awesome. Yeah. So as much as this film is, you know, sort of quote-unquote bad, whatever, but there's some real gems which just go, wow, yeah, it's, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... I know that... to, uh, was it James Cameron that did all the sort of special effects on this film? Yep. So you can see where he's all sort of plugged in. And then yeah. obviously... For I, I've seen him film. talk about just like gluing the metal models together and stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, I could imagine there was him. Give me another McDonald's box so I can, you know, turn it into something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I mean that's yeah, all they did is just start gluing stuff on there. But yeah, okay. um, I don't, I don't know, man. I'll always have a soft spot for this movie because, again, it's the whole ragtag. It's the A team, right? It's a ragtag. They've all got special abilities. Who's the little two guys that are with uh, uh, Kelvin? Uh, Kelvin. <laughs> Kelvin and Kelvin, no relation. <laughs> <laughs> These little bitty guys, little bitty man, guys with, man, with big, 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 big bald, bald heads, heads. <laughs> and they are wrapped in their their outfits are it's the same thing they did for Superman the movie, right? They took the yeah. the the 3M material and made the suits so when you when you shine a light on it, they like glow. So these little guys with these big heads are walking around glowing everywhere and apparently can control heat. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. yeah no idea. They got some kind of power. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> and what they're doing with the lizard guy? Don't know that either. Don't know. But that's what you do there a lot for this film. Don't know. Right. Don't know. It don't matter. But right. It, it, well, as much uh, I, I kind of contradict myself, right? They're saying I want to see the backstory. But the thing, what I'm saying is, is that was growing up in the '80s, you kind of made your own backstory in your head. Right. So these films left you with a bit of an imagination. 
And um, yeah, I, this is it with this film. It's just, I can't, as I said before, I can't forget it. Yeah. It plays around in the head for a while, you know. It's, well, look how unique the whole Nestor thing is, right? Yeah. So, so unique. And the spaceship is more like a Close Encounters of the Third Kind kind of ship, yeah. right? And it's just a glowing, you know, standard oh, saucer UFO mm-hmm. that we think of with these guys that have a third eye and they're all called Nestor one through how many of them is there? Six, seven. I don't know, but they're all somewhat clones of each other, but they mm-hmm. feel and can taste and all that stuff. What each other is going through. Right. So you got the scene with the hot dog, right? Oh, that's not right. Yeah. I you going to say that. <laughs> the, the cowboy is <laughs> cooking the hot dogs, right? Why, how he got a hot dog. Who I knows? Know. <laughs> Ten percent soy. How does a guy from outer space in whatever age this is have hot dogs? But anyways, they never really give you a time frame of what time, you know, what year this is. Maybe it's now. Maybe it's current time. I don't know. But he's cooking hot dogs, and Nestor number one goes, "What do you got there? Yeah, that's a hot dog." And he gives him a bite, but he takes it and he holds it to the one behind him, and he takes the bite, and then they're all chewing. And they all, you know, agree with the taste and stuff. You know, it's just a unique idea. Yeah, and why, why do they have a third eye? Don't, don't know. know. That's it. Don't know. It's, <laughs> and it's not even a real third eye. It's just painted it's on just their head. Painted on their head. <laughs> you know. And, you know? You, and you, as much as we say we don't know, it's like, well, we don't need to know. You yeah, know, it's just yeah. it is what it is. You know, it's, this it's is a, a Roger cool Corman movie. Idea. <laughs> and, and of course, the setup for that is is when it comes down to Sador. Right when he has the one captured, now how did he capture him? Don't know. Oh. <laughs> when did these guys ever these get guys separated? Because separated. the rest of them are all together. How did they grab the one nester out of the bunch? <laughs> See, that's what I mean. You you can start qu- ask questioning way too much. This is it, <laughs> folks. You know, you know, when you watch this film, you might. <laughs> but they they cut off the arm of this nester that they've captured and they sew it on the Sadar's body. And the rest of the nesters start controlling that arm and trying to get Sadar to kill himself, which is supposedly the plan of some sort. I like what Sador says, because he says, you know, when we get a little bit of time, maybe he can do something about his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and well, then well, again, what, what did they do there, right? They, they just took right? the Star they Trek. You when, know, yeah, when know. we're not um, turning worlds into stars, maybe you could sort me hand out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. man. But yeah, the hand tries to kill Sadar, so they immediately take the arm back off with, with this. Uh, what was the what was the game? Um, with this light, bright covered <laughs> chainsaw. It's a chainsaw, but it's like it's got the little light, bright ple- pegs that you would put in the game. Light, bright or yeah, bright, yeah. light, light, bright. And it's just slowly spinning. I was like, man, what are you going to cut with that? <laughs> you know what, Rick? That was the slowest part of the movie, wasn't it? That chainsaw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this this movie is actually, you know, close to two hours long, but it moves really quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it, you get it, your typical setup of, of the Star Wars where, you know, he's being chased by other uh, ships and he's having to learn how to shoot. And, you know, he's going against the, the, the leadership of Nell, who says, let me take care of it. No, let me take care of it. He's battling that whole thing of trying to be in charge and learning things for the first time. And he's on, on this mission to go around and find these other people to help. Uh, and, you know, it, it works really well. It really does. Uh, <laughs> Simple Danning's character is like a Viking warrior, right? Yeah, Valkyrie, isn't she? Yeah, that's yeah. it. And, you know, so she's she's trying to die in battle. Right. That's the whole glorious thing is to have a beautiful ending, I think, as much. There's one line in this movie that I never picked up on when I was a kid. I'm going to I'm going to mess it up. But it really, really caught me off guard this time when I heard it. And uh, because she tells our main character, uh, Shad, about, you know, our whole goal in life is is to. To, to to fight bravely and to to die beautifully, have a beautiful ending. <laughs> and 
he, he says, well, I don't see how dying is beautiful in any sta- any standard. She says, you've never seen a Valkyrie go down. And I was like, hang Ooh. on. <laughs> <laughs> how do I take that? <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's the other thing with this film, watching it as a seven year old and as an adult, you start to realize how much innuendo is in oh, this yeah. film as well. Sexual content. Um, yeah. It's a little bit rapey sometimes, isn't it, with these guys? <laughs> you know, you're just thinking, whoa, hang on. This is really rinsing its PG rating. <laughs> you know, like, we have to bring up Sador's clan or whatever yeah, they are. Yeah. Because they've all got the, like, their heads been split open and sewn back together. It's I, how do we make these guys look bad? Well, let's put this thing down the side of the, you know what I mean? It, let's try to cover up try. half of one of their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, push their nose up a little bit. Yes. I, I, it's just, it's like, why do they all look that way, but he doesn't, right? It's just a, weird, right. It's just a weird thing, man. <laughs> and uh, I love the fact of, <laughs> they've got these viewers that come down, right, when they're fighting, that they're looking through, and I'm like, shouldn't it be, like, misshaped? Because they got the one good eye. <laughs> and they get this other one that the opening's like this. <laughs> No, that's just something they missed, I guess, when they were putting this together. Wait a minute. They can't really see out of that eye. So why would the viewers, you know, look like a normal two-eyed, you know, pair of binoculars or whatever? Anyways, we're poking fun, but deep down, there's no doubt we we love this movie. And let's talk about the um, James Horner soundtrack on this film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. It's just amazing. Um, Yeah. you really do feel like you're going into outer space for this film, you know, because every, I think every character's kind of almost got their own soundtrack, mm-hmm. you know, when they're up on screen, which is amazing. Yeah, I and, mean, you can tell they did a lot of work with the soundtrack on this one, for sure. The other thing I was going to say, I, I put this film into a trilogy of me growing up at the time, and if you might you might get this as well, Rick, is uh, Star Trek II, The Rafficon, mm-hmm. and Crow. So huh. I could see all all these three films happening in the same universe. So you know, like you got today with Marvel, I could see these films intertwining with each other, and you could have sure. Prince Prince Colwyn with Shad and Captain Kirk turning up to fight Sador and <laughs> and Carl, something like that, you know. So Ugh. fight some and slayers, I, man. Yeah, and some slayers. But, and I think a lot of that is because of the James Horner soundtrack, right? We've all yep. got the same theme, so um, yeah. So I, I put this as a trilogy. Well, which how isn't about a that? But that's how I see it. Well, you know what? It's, it's your it's your movies. You can do what you want to with them. <laughs> and the thing I was going to say as well, and I'm not, I'm, this is a little plug into how I mean as well. You and Danny Bennett, because you yeah. mentioned it through Kroll. You got this big planet. Just got one little village on it. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> got one. It's only got one village. Yeah. Nothing else going on this planet. Yeah. And the fact that Sadar even wants to waste his time on taking it over because what do you got? 20, 25 people living there? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he's already got these people held. He's like, I'll come back in a week. Well, that's the other thing, too. It's what? like, why would you wait a week? Why wouldn't you just say, hey, we're changing the guard right now <laughs> instead of going, I'm going to give you seven days. To accept me as your leader, and then if you don't, then I'm going to come back and make myself your leader. Well, yeah. uh, what's the holdup? <laughs> we have to have a reason to go to space and get this team together, so we have to have time. But uh, realistically, uh, kind of going back to Battlestar Galactica, they just show up, start blowing stuff up, you're done, right? So that's just an interesting thing when I was watching. I was like, why seven days, you know? Because is that the theme we're going with, with with seven, right? You got a, the Magnificent Seven, the Seven Samurai. You get seven days. Yeah, I think that's what they were going for. Seven though. nesters. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you get a great land battle as well, don't you, with um, Cowboy? Oh, yeah. And yeah. Who's obviously cool. the Han Solo, Han Solo of the of the the story? I mean, he's Absolutely, he's the yeah. cowboy, he's the gunslinger, he's you know doesn't doesn't follow the standards, didn't want to come here, didn't want to fight, but he did anyway, you know. 
<laughs> and he's got um he's got a belt with a little drinking machine on there, isn't it? I like that. Guess what, mate? You know. <laughs> And he gets busted on it one, and it's like, well, you forgot to put the, <laughs> you forgot to put the water in the in tonigate. No, I didn't. <laughs> you messed up. You left it out. No, I didn't. <laughs> and um, and the movie, and we mentioned this already, but the movie poster for this is great as well. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. But there's, there's there's several several artist uh, drawings that I've seen of this that I really like. So, yeah, very cool stuff, man. And it gives you that yeah. epic Star Wars kind of feel about it. That's right. And what's rare about this, which is very rare in the 80s, is everything you see on this poster is what you see in the movie as well. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's all there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, they didn't oversell it. And they, they're they pretty accurate, man. I mean, that's that's what Sybil Danning looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell this isn't done by canon. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> but they made would, the would, we want made to, would we want would to we see want Battle to... Beyond the Stars Part 2 from canon? Well, you're going to have Chuck Norris as Cowboy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Still, that's just alone. <laughs> yeah, you'll have um, a caveman. You definitely have some ninjas in it, that's for sure. Got to have some ninjas. Some ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and this is the other thing I was going to mention as well, and I'm pointing at you, Dan Bone, as well. If you didn't have films like this, you wouldn't have films, the the, the sort of dino shark films that you have today. And that's just mentioning Corman, isn't it? Because right. uh, he's basically the guy that you could go to in Hollywood to say, I've got this film. Nine times out of ten, he'll greenlight it. Yeah. And... Is it, is, they're trashy movies, aren't they? But they're fun, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, when on that Carnosaur stint, you know, that I talked about. And it's oh, it's yeah. basically it's basically like walking into the warehouse and go, let's see. Well, there's a palm tree and a forklift and a dinosaur suit. Let's make a movie. I mean. <laughs> to do it. Yeah. That's I it. mean, we're looking at the Nestor character. I'm looking at it on on your, on your screen back there. And let's, yep. hey, let's put a guy in a shower cap. <laughs> Spray paint it white and put a third eyeball painted on his head and put him in a white suit. And let's let's have the gloves only have three fingers. Yeah, it, yeah. And there you go. There's your alien, you know. <laughs> and then you've got this uh, Conan looking dude as well with Conan. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't say anything. Nope. I don't even know what he does, but he's there. In nope. fact, he, does, he throws the spear, doesn't he? Like, um, yeah, a crow. I know oh, yeah. this one stuff. Oh, there's a, you know. Yeah, he's like, just another another helper of Caymans, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, that's that's kind of his role. He never says a thing, you know, which would be the role I would be great at in a movie if I didn't have to say anything, you know. The strong, silent type. I could be a Kelvin, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. So yeah, man, lots of great memories of this. Um. When did you first watch it, Rick? Uh, on TV? About, or about just... 1982 on HBO. Yep. Yeah. It was just on repeat pretty often. And it's one of those that every time it came on, I'm watching it. Yeah. Uh, I was infatuated with with, uh, with Cayman at the time because that was pretty cool looking lizard outfit, you know. And the fact that he was going to eat that girl. But he was like, hey, you know, it's just what I do. You know, he, he wasn't like, Rah. he was like, hey, how are you? I'm Kelvin and I'm going to eat you. You're going to be my supper tonight. These are my <laughs> friends, Kelvin. <laughs> I mean, that's, kind of, that's kind of his approach. I'm like, wow, how yeah. odd. <laughs> she just mentioned Sador, didn't you? That's it, right. Sador. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So Sador has wiped out pretty much all of his civilization. And hmm. uh, he's like the last one. So, uh He's he's out for revenge, you know. That's all you had to do. <laughs> but I actually I watched this before I actually watched Star Wars. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because cool. um, yeah. So this kind of had more of an impression on me. Hmm. Anyway, don't get me wrong, Star Wars is great. Yeah. But I saw this and I saw Battlestar Galactica first as well. Yeah. Um. So this is kind of like my building block of people say. Why are you the way you are today? I'll just go, go and watch. <laughs> I'll just explain it. You know? 
you know, I can't say that it's much different for me. I did see Star Wars first, but mm. uh, just just the I was I loved sci-fi stuff as a kid because we were really starting to hit the heyday of it. Because before that, it was so hokey that you know, if I try to watch a sci-fi movie from like the 50s or 60s, I'm just like, eh, I can't really get into it. But yeah. Star Wars changed everything and uh, made it gritty. It look, made it made it look lived in. Uh, yeah. Aliens did as well. Blade Runner. Uh, but when you it, it just really changed the way everything was put together and perceived. And they spent time using the Kubrick's style of imagery for the spaceships and stuff. Mm-hmm. It just took it to a whole different level and it made it more realistic. It didn't look like a ship being hung by wires with fake smoke coming out of the back of it just going across the screen you know (laughs) and uh i don't know i was this was my bag when i was a kid i loved these kind of movies and you kind of see where you know superman all this stuff falls in this too because it's that fantasy type thing right but uh yeah these these movies are way before i became a horror fan this is this is where it started for me was these kind of flicks yeah, I can see that because this is kind of like a good entry to horror as well, wasn't it? Sure. Because there's a couple of horror elements in here. Yeah, um, Dan, Dan Bone and I were just talking recently. We were talking about things and movies that we grew up with that weren't horror movies, but absolutely terrified us. And we brought up Pearl, you know, the the scene with the old man and his, he's the changeling. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. that's scary stuff. And Superman 3, the woman in the computer. Oh, that gave me trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, these these are that gateway. Well, I mean, just like Cayman in this, right? Here's a creature that is willing to eat a person. Hey, it's no big deal. Hey, it's just what I do, you know. And but you have to stop and go. Wait a minute. <laughs> he's got this girl hung up. He's being all nice and cordial, but you know he's going to eat her in a little while, and he probably won't cook her. He'll probably just eat her like she is, you know. So you start putting that stuff together. You're like you know, like you said earlier. These these are not good people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Th- I think that really led to. I'm sure it's the same with you. It led you to start digging into those other movies, and then it becomes that it becomes that uh, chasing the dragon as far as the horror flicks, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. I mean, like I say, I'm still discovering new films from this time period. Mm-hmm. The ones that you bring up on your show. Uh, <laughs> I can't the name of the film now, but I'm, I'm, you know, I see Dots of Movie coming up. And I think, weird. How come I haven't seen this film before? And it turns out it's, it's quite an entertaining film as well. Sure, right? sure, yeah. I mean, that that's again, that's why I like doing this show. Same thing with Hell Ming. There's movies that you just you should have seen, you know. And we either want people to revisit them, just like it's always fun to go back and revisit something like this, right? Because one, it's part of your childhood for one thing. Yeah. But for somebody who hasn't seen it, you can – if you put it in the right time frame, you can see where that influence was going for everything else, right? That's, that's again, why I like the, the Italian stuff so much because they were totally going to rip something else off, but they're going to show you a different way of doing it all together. Yeah, you know? exactly. yeah. Matter of fact, I just watched one last night, and I reached out to Richard Glenn Smith from uh, Hello, the Doom Show, right? This is the oh, Doom yeah. Show. And I was like, how is it possible that I missed this movie? Mm. And uh, believe it or not, I know you're a big fan too of of demons, right? <laughs> there's a there's a whole, there's, a, yeah. there's mm-hmm. a whole slew of movies that are considered demons movies, even though they're not in the title. They just consider them to be demons four, demons five, demons six. Well, I'm going through all of those. Oh, uh, well, I know. Yeah, the church wasn't it? I think the church. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but there's one, The Black Cat. And I thought, okay. When I first saw it, I thought Black Cat's 1981, 82, Lucio Fulci. Why is mm-hmm. it in the demons? I don't know. It's not that movie. It's 87. Never seen it before. And it pretty much blew my mind. Mm. Why, why it's considered a demons movie? I don't know. But that'll be coming up. I've got a whole demons saga that's coming up where I go through all those movies. And, uh, I, you know, again, even I'm I miss things, and I had to reach out to him and go, "How have I missed this?" And he's like, "It's it's incredible, isn't it?" You know, <laughs> but talking about that movie. Yeah. So, but yeah, just like all these trucker films, the all the smoky ripoff movies, I didn't yeah, know they is, existed. That's probably what I was talking about when I was looking at your shows dropping on YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, 
what is this? What's I didn't even know they did that. You know, I'm just wow. Like I say, the smoky rip rip offs. Yeah, and the, Corm and Corman was a big part of that, right? Because most of those movies came out of his his department. <laughs> the ghost the ghost movie one that you did the two it was like a oh detective type ghost yep. film. Yeah, Sherman like Hensley. Yeah. And I saw the trailer for it, and I thought, this film looks hilarious. It looks entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a recommendation from my buddy, uh, Britt Collins, who listens right. all the time, too. And, yeah, I mean, he he kind of threw me a curveball there, because that's one yeah. I hadn't even seen that I, I don't think. That, uh, I had seen part of it before. I'd never made it all the way through it. So, yeah, yeah that's the that's the fun of this, man. But we, we've gotten way off track. <laughs> no, I love it, yeah it's it's all about that yeah yeah and that's that's great but of course you know i've been doing a ratings kind of thing so one through five on this movie uh five being tops right one being crap i'm gonna give it a four out of five it's almost a five for me but i can't quite put it there because i i can't put it up there with with the ones that i put as a five which is pretty rare <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna say four as well I can't yep. give it a five out of five because I don't think it will suit a five out of five, if you know what yep. I mean, for the type of movie it is. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's um, it's a rip off of Star Wars and it knows it is. Yep. Does it show you something different? Absolutely. And does it deserve to be where it is? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure deep down inside George Lucas, when he brought out Star Wars, probably saw this coming. And if yeah. I'm honest with you, probably a little glint in his eye thinking this is great, you know. Because this is probably what I wanted. I wanted to bring out sci-fi this way. So sure. Um, well, you yeah. got to remember. Originally, he wanted to do Flash Gordon and couldn't get the rights to it. So that's right. Yeah, you so, think but... about you wouldn't even have Star Wars if he would have gotten the rights for Flash Gordon. Which you think about Flash Gordon, how long would that have really last? You know? Yeah. Seriously, I mean, it's a it's amazing that out of desperate need of, I want to do a sci-fi flick, but I can't get the the property that I want. I'm just going to make something up and it become what it has and influenced everything else. Even Flash Gordon in the eighties. Yeah. Know? It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. You know, Dean Lorenz has picked it up and you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the legend is told. <laughs> <laughs> Impetuous boy. <laughs> oh, such a fun flick man and that's the other thing that you, you said it a while ago it, these movies know these what movies they are exactly you know, yeah you know, and, and you have to respect them for that because they're not trying to change the world are they trying to ride the shirt to shirt tails of other movies and try to make a profit absolutely but at the same time they're having fun with it and if you let yourself go and just enjoy it you're you're going to be heavily entertained and I can't think of a better scenario than that. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I will say this, and people might disagree with me and think, what the hell, RJ, what are you thinking? I actually think that films should be made like this today. Sure. And you'll, be, you'll be surprised because I always think that we, we've we got so much CGI and everything, and it's fine, you know, I, the, these films are doing well, but Sometimes you've got to go back to the basics and you'll be yeah. surprised that people will go, oh, that's refreshing. Right. So if you go back to this style or wacky um, filmmaking with these types of effects, might end right. up having a hit. You say, yeah, you never know. There's movies that come along that really surprise you with, like you said, getting back to basics. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Rubber or not, which is <laughs> yes, I did, yes. it's ridiculous. Exactly, but when it yeah. but when it came out, it kind of hit that reset button of, you know, grindhouse. What is, what is this movie even about? You know, yeah. even the people in it are going, this don't make any sense. Well, no, no. it doesn't. That's kind of the whole point, you know. It it, it kind of reminds me of where Peter Jackson was going, if you yep. know what I mean, with his brain dead type films. You right. Know, so yeah, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we end up going back to this. It's, you know, again, even if it's low budget, it's originality, you know, even though, again, like you said, we know this is pulling from Star Wars, pulling from Seven Samurai, but taking it and, and making it your own and give it originality is saying something, right? Uh, for that, I really love it. Uh, and again, that's because of that love of the Italian 
cinema that I have because that's 90% of what they do is taking an idea that was successful but giving its own spin. And a lot of times they ended up liking that movie better than the movie they ripped off. But uh, that's just me, right? But it's I, I can see that. I don't know if that's because of being a musician and you know what it takes to find your own thing, your own style. And it really comes from a culmination of all the other styles that you love, a la Absolutely. Tarantino, right? Yep. Yep. Tarantino did not just create this new thing that hadn't been there before. He he cherry picked the stuff that he wanted and put it together and it made this thing. Stranger Things, same idea. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. And, uh, and as and I mentioned with um, James Gunn, yep. you know, with Guardians, obviously Nell's an influence on Star Lord's um, vehicle. Yes. Uh, he also has the I've mentioned this before, the blasters that he's got from the black hole. Right, right. I've never right. seen blasters like that before, and then all of a sudden Star Lord's got them, and I thought, hang on a second, I recognize that <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a very distinct gun style, right? Yeah, and let's right. face it, if he if he grew up a fan of Black Hole, you know he's a fan of this movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and I know that's another film that you like, you know. Oh, and like. Yeah, I went to love. theater and saw that Joker, man. <laughs> amazing, isn't it? I, oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing soundtrack, everything. Yeah. Yeah, man, that that music is just haunting. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a score from a '60s horror epic, yeah. you know. It sounds like uh, something revolving, doesn't it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. In fact, Classic. a little shout out to, to Danny Bennett when you guys reviewed it. I'll never forget what he said. He said, "You know, you're screwed when you got a ship called the Palomino." <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> That's why I like it when you guys get together. It's great. A little bit. Oh, of, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's yeah. good. It's yeah. good. So. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I wish I, we could do more, stuff together, more but stuff together, but he, yeah, he's no, just, he's, he's got a lot going on and, you know, sure, yeah. but we will, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to it some more. We've got, uh, we're supposed to do Logan's run pretty soon, but it's just trying to oh. find time to get it done. So yeah, yeah we had a request a... for that one. So, uh, oh, jazz yeah. was the last, last, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Wow. So again, that's those that because of seeing movies like this, it made me go back and revisit those as yeah. a kid because you start, you know, craving as much of that stuff as possible. And uh, but yeah, that'll that'll be a fun one for sure. But well, man, talk a little bit about your shows. I mean, Bite Size is still out there. You still on Legion? It's the first one yeah, when, you, pull, when you first pull up the page. It's still number one on there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Yeah, um, 130 episodes, if you want to have a listen. Um, by the end of it, I ended up getting some guests on board, like you guys. I started reaching out to some people in the industry as well. One of the things I was proudest of was getting Jason Voorhees on the show um, yeah. from part six, which was great. So, yeah, there's some good stuff on there, so check it out. Um, my recent show is with Dan Bone from Haunted Hill, and we yeah. do... On the aliens, uh, <laughs> which we're having a whole ton of fun with, which is that's a, a mystery, yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a very interesting idea <laughs> to come up with that. So and again, that's but that's you, man, and that's again you you're always you, I always tell people and you're the same way. I'm ahead of my time. The problem is I'm only about 15 minutes ahead. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but like I say, I got you to thank for that, Rick, because you got me into podcasts and you invited me on to Doodle Aside the Eighties and right, yeah, the right. rest was history, so it's great. Yeah, yeah, we did. It's uh, always good did, when uh, you and I get together. How Howard the Duck, man, that was a a fun time. That's right. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> King Solomon's Minds. King Solomon's Minds. That's. I mean, we we had some good some good times there, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. I, I I like I said early on. I don't know if I've got it on this recording or not, but I knew early on that, you know, you just had that ability. You had the knowledge. Uh, you know, your your show has always sounded great. Your your audio quality is always fantastic, and you know, you're just a natural. Thank you, Rick. One day I might know what I'm doing. <laughs> Same here, man. Yeah, fake right. fake it till you get it, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think a lot of this, is, what, what you see is what you get. This is me most of the time, you know. Right, right. Any, and that's the other time. thing, too. Yeah, I mean, you, you are who you are. 
Yeah. Yeah. And except for your name, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it. You know. <laughs> I mean, this is I mean, this, this is, is the guy is that the Kurt guy. Russell modeled himself after. If you don't know this, <laughs> Kurt, Russell's Kurt Russell's character in the character. thing was modeled after RJ, my friend here. Friend here. <laughs> oh, my alter ego. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's been great stuff, Rick. You know. Oh uh, man, always a blast, man. So glad to to get to talk with you again. It's been a long time coming, and we're gonna do this some more, no doubt. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Anytime you want to chew the fat, and, you know, especially the 80s, because anything oh, yeah. can happen in the 80s, as you say. Still. And I think the quote for today after watching this film is someone says, what, you know, Battle Beyond the Stars? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let us know what you think about this movie. And uh, RJ and I will be teaming up again, and we're going to to find some other stuff and keep on rocking. Folks, we will check you later. See you later.